see if I can get my take two. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Today is the last day that I can take work this marking period for this school year. Remember, submit that picture and the documentation, and we have the self-reflection to do, so please check the module for all of that. I was telling you last time about how we needed some rain, and I left the school the other day, and the storm, the rainstorm that was rolling in, fortunately, I didn't get caught in the rain, but I was able to get some, some video of the lightning and the thunder. Oh my, I just... It was actually quite scary. Sitting in the car trying to record this, lightning goes right over right over the top of me, the thunder almost instantly right after the lightning flash. As you can see, I just quick stopped it, got out of there, but it was pretty amazing. So much lightning, so much thunder, really cool storm rolling in. Hey, we need the water for the garden, right? It's good stuff. So I was spending some time after school working on the Normandy Parkway sign. Uh, Another problem solving, real life example of the type of projects that we are doing this, this year on the CNC machine. Here's a real life example of something that had to get done. The old sign used vinyl letters on the wood where it would say more school district and it would have the address and there's like a pencil on the sign. If you don't know what, that, what it looks like normally, don't worry about it, but there's a pencil on it. They got the sign there and the vinyl letters because the sun was hitting this sign for so long, they started wrinkling and curling up to the point where you couldn't even read it anymore. So maintenance asked if I could carve the letters into the wood. And uh, yeah, you know what? That's easy to do. And you all know how to do it. So what's the first thing we need to do? In this case, we're carving into material that already exists, which does present uh, a unique challenge in itself because you're not carving and then cutting around it. You actually have to carve right in the middle of this piece of wood, we have to start with our Z X and Y axis zero, zero in the middle of the piece of wood, but we need a flat surface. Most critical thing, as I've said before, is the surface has to be flat. So you can start where you carve the letters and you get nice even depth. So I had to take a chisel and scrape off all the vinyl lettering, get it all cleaned up nice, a little uneven with the paint, layers of paint and some weathered, uh, you know, whatever junk on there, had to get rid of that stuff. So ran it through the surface sander just to smooth it out so the whole thing was nice and flat and even. Came to find out that the top part of the sign was actually made of foam and the address piece with the 19A, that one actually is made of wood. Interesting. Whenever you're trying to do a long piece like that, it's so critical that the piece of wood, when it's secured to the table, follows perfectly where the router would go in the X axis. So in, to ensure that it followed it perfectly. I screwed a piece of wood down, a scrap piece of wood to the bed of the table and cut a pocket out on that board so that I could hammer in a little support piece at the bottom so that I could press it tight against it. And I know that that is a perfect straight line even with the x-axis of the machine. So once that was installed, I could clamp down the piece of foam perfectly, set the x and y zero zero to the center and in this case, I'm using a 90 degree V carving bit. For all of your projects, we used a 60 degree V carving bit because when you do smaller letters, the 60 degree is a little steeper and it carves a little deeper into the wood to do the same width line. But in this case, it's a big letter and the wood is not that thick. So I didn't want to go that far in. So the 90 degree V bit is a little bit wider, still gives you the full V carved letter, but it's a little shallower of a cut so you don't risk going all the way through. So installed the 90 degree V bit and uh, ran the tool path. So I wanted to make sure that long piece of wood, that long piece of foam actually, I had to get the words Morris School District centered, evenly spaced from the sides. So in V-Carve, I created a drawing that matched the exact dimensions of the piece that I had. Zero XY was in the middle. And then on the piece of foam, I found dead center, made a little pencil mark so that when I put it on the CNC machine, I can set that as the zero for the X and Y. But it came out looking great. Did the same exact process for the 19A that hangs below it. And got both of those all carved out. 
Now the pencil presents a unique challenge because it's not just a flat piece of wood. Same process, used a hand plane this time to clean up all the letters. However, the top of the pencil is not flat and I can't run that through the surface sander. But I actually messed up doing the pencil and I had to go back and fix it, so we will talk about that in another video. Now, we'll get into another installment of Mr. Campbell's Toolbox where I talk about hand tools you can keep in your toolbox. Okay, so the next tool I wanna to talk about is wrenches. Now, you have screws, screwdriver, nails, hammer, nuts and bolts, wrenches. Some basic crescent wrenches like these are so useful. They have these little adjusters on them. Really nice to have a set of crescent wrenches just to hold the, the nut or the bolt in while you tighten it. Uh, vice grips are useful. They, uh, they can tend to, you know, if you don't use them right, they can, they can cause some damage, but they're super handy to have. Not as useful though in everyday use, I think, as a, just a standard wrench, but definitely a good option. They can scratch and damage whatever material that they get nearby because they're metal and they tend to have some sharp edges there. So I wanna be careful of that, but really useful because when you have a nut or a bolt and you can't just finger, you can't just tighten it with your hands. You need a tool like this and they're so inexpensive and so easy to get, crescent wrenches. Now step up the game a little bit, go ahead and get a set of socket wrenches. I bought a set of socket wrenches when I was uh, like a teenager and I still have them today and I use them all the time. Not any like crazy set that you would use that specialty that we use for like automotive or otherwise, but just like to put together a piece of furniture that you bought or to loosen something. Just having a nice standard set of, uh, of millimeter and a uh, standard socket set, really, really nice. But you need both because bolts and nuts and bolts will come in standard, which is feet and inches. I mean, there's no bolts that are feet, so it's just fractions of an inch. These are three quarter, five eighths, whatever. Uh, so then you'll have like, oh, this is a five eighths bolt. Okay, there you go. Um, but you might also have metric, which is this side. So these are like 14 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Very common ones is you got longer extenders in these, these kits. Really nice to have also for nuts and bolts. But uh, you know, sometimes you can just get away with a wrench. And But if you don't have any of these things, those nuts and bolts are just gonna be annoying. So definitely a wrench for sure. If you're ready to step up a little bit, get yourself a small socket set. Doesn't even have to be this many. It could be like five or six sizes, just the most common ones. They come in really small kits. Um, so you can get yourself a wrench, and you can get yourself a small socket set, and uh, then you'll be able to handle any nuts and bolts that you might come across in your daily life. Definitely something to keep in the toolbox. <laughs> So hope you enjoyed that little discussion about hand tools. I'll tell you more about the Normandy Parkway sign next time. I hope you have a great weekend and I will see everybody in class or on the Google Meet. Remember, Morristown cares about you. I care about you. Be excellent to each other.